Ballot item number 17, private members notice of motion number 110. Ms. Hunter. Member for Scarborough Guildwood. Speaker, I move that, in the opinion of this House, the government must rise to meet the urgent needs facing Ontarians during the COVID-19 pandemic and address worsening issues of housing, poverty, mental health, long-term care, education, job creation, crime and violence, and that calling an election before the fixed date in 2022 would put politics ahead of public health and interrupt the ongoing COVID-19 response with a serious human toll in the short and long term. Ms. Hunter has moved private member's notice of motion number 110. Pursuant to Standing Order 101, the member has 12 minutes for her presentation. And again, as the member for Scarborough Guildwood. Thank you, Speaker. At this very moment, our province is under threat of novel coronavirus, COVID-19. Yesterday, Ontario passed the 54,000 total case mark, sadly with 2,975 deaths, mostly in long-term care. And we are just hitting a second wave. It's projected that the number of cases will rise to 1,000 per day unless actions are taken. Hotspot areas like my riding of Scarborough Guildwood and Etobicoke North, where the Premier himself represents, have not had a break since the virus hit in March. We see a school year that has been lost due to lockdown and back to school that was rocky due to lack of proper planning and investments needed to keep class sizes low and students, educators and families safe. Long-term care homes are bracing for a second wave as they cope with flu season and change in weather. Speaker, Despite knowing the risks of a second wave, this government has failed to plan adequately for a surge in testing and contact tracing. Instead, they've restricted the ability of people to get tested. Ontario's economy has been hard hit. Small businesses are at risk of closing with no credible relief package in sight from this government. Women, Black, Indigenous and other people of colour are seeing deeper and longer effects of job loss. Yet, instead of preparing and doing the necessary work, the Premier and his ministers have been on a summer-long campaign-style tour paid for by taxpayers. This must stop. Instead of keeping their eye on the ball, they were busy politicking. Now we have rumours of an early election fueled by reports of PC incumbents being acclaimed to run in the next election, and every riding would be nominated candidates by March. The priorities of the Premier must be about what is important to people. No order, please. Order. Today, all members of this House, and especially the Premier, can go on record in support of this motion and explicitly state that responding to the impact of COVID-19 must be our priority at this time, not campaigning for an unnecessary election. We need to be able to take the Premier at his word, but sadly, we cannot. I'm calling on this House to ensure that Ontarians are not forced to participate in an election in the middle of a public health crisis. We have a duty to protect our residents, and pushing them to the polls at this time would be unconscionable risk to their health. The Premier and his government should instead dedicate their undivided attention to fixing our systems that are overburdened and overstrained by the pandemic, fixing the chaos in our education system, and protecting residents and staff in long-term care. This ought to be the focus of the government. We need to pay attention to what really matters. In Toronto and in communities across the province, COVID-19 is particularly concentrated in low-income and racialized communities. To quote the chair of the Toronto Board of Health, like many infectious diseases, COVID-19 preys on poverty. Vulnerability to this virus is directly connected to the social determinants of health, income, race, ethnicity, and housing status, to name a few. 
Our public health data shows that the impacts of this pandemic have not been equally distributed and that its lasting effects will be hardest on those who are already vulnerable and marginalized in our communities. That's why all levels of government must commit to working together to tackle the social determinants of health and address social inequalities that COVID has both exposed and worsened. Our social inequalities have been aggravated by the pandemic in other ways as well. Gun crime is on the rise. Youth programs and after-school activities have been shut down. There is a tsunami of evictions. Food bank visits are skyrocketing. And we've seen a dramatic rise in opioid overdose deaths since the pandemic began in March. The same social determinants of health that exposed racialized communities to COVID-19 are also key contributors to the rash of gun violence we've seen rising in our cities since the pandemic began. In the city of Toronto, there have been more incidences of gun violence and they're getting deadlier. Over the same period last year, incidents are up 12% and shooting deaths are up nearly 20%. The former chief of police, Mark Saunders, said, you cannot arrest your way out of this problem. Clearly, more needs to be done to invest in communities. Many community organizations and nonprofits are struggling, but the work that they do is essential for youth who benefit from it. Nearly overnight, spaces for youth closed, community centers and other programs that kept young people anchored, supported and cared for have disappeared. The government needs a plan to address this gap during the pandemic. Gun violence is both a public health and a social issue. This is a crisis. It's a problem that my private member's bill, Safe and Healthy Communities Act, addressing gun violence 2019, would bridge. The bill would declare gun violence a public health crisis. It would provide funding for hospital-based violence interventions and trauma-informed counseling for survivors and others affected by gun violence to help break the cycle of violence. The City of Toronto Public Health has adopted the bill and already are working to implement recommendations, and we should do the same. The province's support would also give local boards of health the resources that they need to provide programs and services for reducing gun violence. I'm calling on the government to take the lives and trauma of Ontarians seriously and address poverty in our cities and communities and invest in those communities and make resources available for youth, spaces and after-school programs. The Ontario government can afford to invest more in our education system to make it both safe and effective. The government's plan is not working. Our, our education system is in chaos. Just today, the Catholic Board announced another school that will be in lockdown. The virus has swept through our schools the same way it has swept through communities across the province. We've heard reports that many boards do not have the resources that they need to roll out the return to school effectively, but the government just isn't listening. To quote Dr. Carol Campbell, associate professor in the Ontario Institute of Studies and Education at the University of Toronto, the United Nations has warned that students are facing a generational catastrophe due to COVID-19 pandemic. In Ontario, there, are, there continue to be issues with back-to-school plan, and already over one in ten schools have a confirmed COVID-19 case. Students' learning and health are being negatively affected with increasing inequities evident. Our students' futures are at risk, and they are at stake. Decisions taken or not taken now will have consequences for many years to come. The government must fulfill its mandate to the people of Ontario by taking action for the long haul of the pandemic to ensure that we do not have a generational catastrophe. The province has received billions of dollars in transfers from the federal government to prepare for a safe restart and the reopening of schools. Students need help now. This disruption to their education and development could have impacts lasting well beyond the pandemic. We need to ensure that youth are safe and can learn, which begins in our world-class education system. Ontario is in a housing crisis as a direct result of the pandemic. 
Tenants are facing a tsunami of evictions. The government's response so far is simply insufficient. The rent freeze for 2021 passed in Bill 204 does not go far enough and does not address the root causes of unaffordability and predatory practices of some landlords. We haven't seen the kind of direct support for tenants and small landlords in Ontario as we've seen in other jurisdictions like BC, despite the fact that all tenants are facing the same issues as a result of the pandemic. With rising evictions, the Premier can't keep shouting at the wind and expecting things to change. Just last week, Toronto City Council passed a motion calling on the Premier to reinstate the moratorium on rent residential evictions, and the motion passed with a margin of 22 to 1. Housing is a right in Canada. People need a safe and healthy place to call home. Housing provides the ability to seek and maintain employment, education, and it impacts on mental health. Food banks' use has also skyrocketed during the pandemic. The Daily Bread Food Bank is reporting a 25% increase in visits since the pandemic began, and the Feed Ontario, which is the provincial network of food banks, has reported a growing number of individuals who are working but still require the support of a food bank. We're also seeing a drastic rise in opioid overdose deaths since the pandemic, and more work is needed and solutions for this problem before more people continue to die. Speaker, the breakdown of our social safety net under the strain caused by COVID-19 serves no one in the short or the long term. Our overburdened and overstrained systems accelerate social issues like poverty, housing, mental health, addictions, violence, and crime. There is a human cost and an economic cost to these issues. They're complex, they're interwoven. They require urgent action from this government. The patchwork response that we've seen so far will not address the spectrum of need that are worsening as a result of COVID-19. Speaker, we cannot afford a generational catastrophe, and the government must stop taking its eye off the ball and get to work. The government needs to plan and take action now. Today, the government has an opportunity to affirm that they see these issues and they take them seriously and will take action to make lives better and safer in Ontario. Indeed, Speaker, I invite all members of the House to vote in favour of this motion and especially, I heard someone over there saying no, what in this motion can you possibly disagree with? This is the job of elected representatives. People send us here, not for ourselves, but to serve the needs that they have. Speaker, my colleagues on the House especially need to vote for this motion and show Ontarians that you're serious about this pandemic and saving lives. Thank you, Speaker.